big bar of steel. It always arrived for them. And that's, that was a good thing. I learned a lot from those guys. Uh, I was a Catholic, so tithing was very foreign to me. I didn't have a clue about tithing because my idea of tithing in the Catholic Church was whatever loose change you had in your ashtray, hallelujah, or in your pocket, you gave God that. Or you gave God a lot of George Washingtons. And, I, you know, nonetheless, everybody is blessed in their own way. So some people were asking me today, what is the secret, you know, and they've been writing in and asking all these questions. I said, you know what? I'm just going to teach on money so that everybody can get it. Um, by no means am I trying to dig into your pocket. You should dig into your own pocket and purpose to the Lord whatever you feel. Uh, you show the Lord how much you care for His blessings by whatever you give. Okay? So, amen. How many of you are cool with that? All right. So, let's check it out tonight. Okay? So, you know, I, this, when I first started becoming a Christian. You know, I was a Catholic for a long time. My whole life until I was about 20, I think I was 28, something like that, 28, 27. I was, I was a Catholic all the way up until then. And something just struck me as I was missing something. I was always missing something. And I, I found myself in a Christian church on Wainui Avenue, just decided to go there. And one thing they would teach was about money. And I, I noticed one thing. As long as I would give, God would never stop giving back. So I'm here to teach you about flow. How many of you like flow? And not the one on progressive. Okay. I don't know about her. But I noticed one thing, you know. I remember, I think I told this story one time. I was, my, my washing machine blew up. And the dryer went right after so I was like, oh, my God. And you guys know, we know hand wash, right? Who hand washes nowadays? So I went down to Sears, and I was looking at some washing machines. And I was tithing already. I was a Christian. I was tithing. And I said, Lord, I don't know even money to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So I went there, and I ran into my friend who sells appliances at Sears. And he told me, he said, hey, you looking for a washer? I said, yeah. He said, bro, I got a deal for you. It's like, what is the deal? $329. I said, bro, that's not a deal. Meet me by the back door. I get a better deal for you. That's what I told him. And he's like, hey, you go to church, eh? you? I said, yeah. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to pray on this. I'm going to pray. Okay, Lord, I need a washing machine. Clothes are starting to pile up. So what am I going to do? So I just went home and I prayed. And I, I went and I did like you. The seed offering on the seed envelope, I put, I need a washing machine, Lord. I really do. And I planted my seed. And I remember I planted it. was $329. So I had $3.29. So I figured, ah, I'm going to put $3.29 and I'm going to see what's going to happen. So I went. And over about two services, I, I still planted a, another seed for a washing machine. Then I went back to see my friend because I said, what, the price didn't change? He goes, no. I said, oh, Lord. But he said, oh, I tell you what. This washer came in off the barge and get one scratch on him. I said, one scratch? I said, eh, I'm not going to wash the clothes on the outside of the washer. <laughs> he said, so come, 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 look. I said, I said, where the scratch? He said, you don't see him. I said, I don't see nothing. Bro. He said, well, get one scratch over here. If you look, some people, they really get the kind of get one scratch. So I said, so what do you guys discount in the thing? He said, oh, we're going to discount the washer. We're going to give uh, 33% off. So uh, it was just about $110 off. So it came down to $220, somewhere around there. So I said, oh, okay, Lord, uh, I already sold the seed for the 100 fold, so I'm going to just trust you for this. And then I went, this was in the early days of the Internet. So I went on the Internet. I found a coupon. I found a coupon, and it says, any appliance at Sears, you can get 50% off. 50% off today. So I took my coupon and I went to my friend. I said, hey, what do you think, bro? What do you think? I, he, he goes, nah, bro, scratch and then kind. They don't take the coupon. I said, you better go ask because it doesn't say on here that you don't take. So he said, oh, let me go ask my manager. So he went, talked to his manager. And the manager said, no, it's good because it doesn't say not on clearance or not on sale. So I was like, oh. So the washer now came what? 
was 220 or thereabouts, came to 110. I was like, oh, bro, 110 bucks. And I said, okay, but I still know 110 bucks. I told him, hold them. He said, bro, I only can't hold them for so many days. I said, hey, it's a new day. Put a new sign. He said, bro, you're driving me nuts. I said, nah, you was already there from when I knew you elementary, bro. So he, he did it, and he held it for a little while longer. And then there was a funny thing that if you buy the dryer, you get the washer for free. So I went back to my friend. I said, bro, so what is this deal with the, if I buy the dryer, I get the washer for free? He said, bro, at $110, you're already getting a washer for free. I said, no, it's not quite free because I don't want the money for that thing. He said, I'll tell you what, bro, you're just the guy. You just put the dryer on hold. He said, charge them to your credit card or whatever. And then i tell you what, I'll give you the washer for free. So I got the washer for free. And I put the dryer on hold on my credit card. I, I told him, just hold him. He said, but I got to swipe your card, but I'm not going to charge your card. I said, okay, shoot. And then I went, and then they had this whole other promotion that if you're buying a dryer during this month on this particular model... It was Whirlpool was giving a rebate. And the dryer was only two ninety nine. dollars said They were giving a rebate for $150. I was like, so I already got the washer for free. And I go get a dryer for $150. And I was like, there's only one problem. I'm going $150 for the other half of the dryer. So I just kept praying and I was just praying. And then this lady came up to me and she says, the Lord is telling me that you're a giver. I said, well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I fit that description. Yeah, I give. And she said, the Lord is telling me to give you $150. For whatever it is that you're sowing for. I was like, shoot. 150 right? 150 And I went to Sears with my 150 because it was going to give me the, the deal for half off. And then I took the coupon and I took him 150 And you know what he said? He said... You know what? It's funny, eh? He said, I get one dry on that is scratching then too. And he's, he said, it's matching the other one that you bought. The washer, get the dry on to match. So I went and I looked at the dry. I said, where the scratch, bro? He said, you don't see them. Same deal. No, I don't see them. So he said, you know what, bro? I'm going to take care of this for you. He said, we get one thing. If you open one Sears card. They're going to give you $150 credit. He said, you don't need to use the card. You just put them on the card and then you just pay off the card. I said, yeah, but who does that? He says, you. So this is a long, drawn out thing. So I ended up, I bought a washer and a dryer. It never cost me one penny and I made $150 in the end. So I said, hallelujah, we're going to eat steak tonight. And the Lord told me, no, you're not. You're going to sow that 150 for the next thing. And you know what the next thing was? Tires for my car. So I put that in the offer. I put the 150 in and my tires was going bad. I said, oh, Jesus, how am I going to do this? I went to my friend at Goodyear. You know what he said? Bro, I get four tires that no match any car in Hilo. But the car you get, I get four tires. I give them all four to you for $150. And I said, what about the mounting and the throwaway and the valve and the balancing? He said, bah, he low high, bro. I give you one deal. <laughs> he thought, throw all that in for 150 What? You know those tires were regularly 300 a piece. He gave them to me for approximately less than, what, $40? Less than $40 a tire. Mounted balance and everything. And then I went over there and I went to pay. And he said, hey, yeah, bro, if you buy four tires, you know they're giving you, they're giving you $50 per tire cash back it just so happened that's my name cash back today so I got tires I got a wash and dry how many of you know that the Lord will take care of you if you take care of the Lord whatever you do for the Lord's house he'll do for your house hallelujah hey, things like that always used to happen it's amazing I, I went to Nani Law one time and I was playing, I was playing golf and I only had $10, so I was walking because I was broke like a joke. And it wasn't no joke because I wasn't laughing. <laughs> and I was playing golf, and I said, Lord, man, 
we really could use some finances. I went on the golf course and I found $100 but a second hole. And I was like, this is an illusion. Because <laughs> everybody was in carts just zooming past this money. And one guy went right over it and they didn't see him. And my ball just so happened to be right next to this $100 bill. And I picked it up and it was soaking wet. So I knew it was there longer than a day. So I knew right there, this was the Lord. Left this for me a couple days. So I went to the clubhouse and I asked, Hey, anybody lost some money on the course? Like I go, I lose money every day on the course. What are you talking about? I said, not you gambling kind of guys. He, no, nobody said nothing. Nobody. He said, but we had a bunch of guys going through here that was gambling yesterday. I said, oh, because I found some money on the course. And he said, yeah. Say, keep them. They're all from Oahu. They're not going to come back. So things like this would happen all the time. I would find money all over the place. It was crazy. You know, one time I went to a, you guys know, right? Get Goodwill and get the Sally shop downtown. I saw this bowl one time. I was like, wow, this thing is nice and came with a lid. I was like, wow, this is nice. It's like my grandma kind of time. And now I'm in the Sally shop looking and I'm like, oh, they like $2 for this thing. And it was kind of like a, like a bowl, but it had a handle, but there was a hole inside. And I was like, wow, these are cool, but how come the, ugh, hard for scrub? If you, go, if you get food up inside this handle, there's no way you can scrub. So I was trying to stick my finger inside for fear. And I pulled out $500 from the hole. I said, I'm buying this bowl right now. And, but I did ask. I said, where did they get this bowl from? And they said, oh, it was just an estate thing. Uh, family, they're not from here. The lady died. They cleaned out her house, dropped everything off. I said, well, Grandma was stashing. She was stashing. I said, where the rest of her stuff? And they said, why? So I, I said, because I'm going to look. And, you know, I was looking through all her stuff, all her stuff, and she had money and all the stuff. I was like, this old lady just was dying to give me the money. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. So I bought all the stuff that I could. Hallelujah. This was a nice windfall. You know what I mean? Things like that would happen. Amen. God is good. I remember one time playing golf and I was telling Auntie in the back, we were playing golf last week. I said, you know my friend, he got one hole in one one time. We were at um, Volcano. We were playing golf and he said this. He said, Bless me, brother team. Bless me. They do that all the time. Bless me. Brah. Because we were playing closest to the hole kind of thing. So he told me, you know, whoever wins the closest to the hole, get the jackpot. We're the last group of the day. And I think it was up to like 1500 bucks. And he told me this. He said, if I, if I get closest to the pin, I give you half. I said, shoot. I'll bless you all day long, bro. If you give me half. He said, if I get one, I told you, maybe you get a hole in one, right? He said, if I get a hole in one, I give you the whole thing. I said, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> I was telling Auntie, he hit, he hit the ball and it hit the cow fence, a wooden fence on Ohia Post. Boom! When it hit the tree, boom! It skipped across the green and went right in the hole. So I looked at him and he was like, yeah, yeah. I said, no, no. <laughs> he said, I told him, bro, a deal's a deal. And he said, you're right. But he said, you know what, better for me because my name is going to be in Golf Digest, hole in one. He, to him, that was worth more because he came from a very wealthy family. So he said, it's my pleasure to give you that money. So I gave him back like 100 bucks. I said, you cannot go empty-handed because he had to buy everybody in a clubhouse drinks after that. So these kind of weird things would happen. As long as I would stay in the flow of God, these things would happen without fail. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Money would show up. I remember being at the gas pump one time and my credit card wasn't working. And these tourists pulled up and said, hey, brother, do you know where so-and-so, how do I get to these places? And P.P. Falls Road. He was talking about boiling pots, right? P.P. Falls so I said, oh, pay, eh, pay. He said, no, no, PP. I said, it's not PP, it's pay, eh, pay. And I was explaining to him, and he's looking at me, he says, your card not working? I said, no. He said, let me get that for you. Slid his card, paid all my gas. You see, just little things would just happen like this. And how many you know that these things aren't like coincidental? 
It's all God's plan to get you in the flow so that you don't ever have to stop being in the flow. Because how many know that as, as far as these stories go, these are, these are money related. But I can tell you one thing. As long as you're a tither and a giver, your health stays at the highest level possible. For some reason, everything does not deteriorate in God as long as you're in the flow. And I found this out a long time ago. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, I prayed for some people today over here. And this lady said, I just feel compelled to give you one dollar. That's all I have. I said, you know what? Keep the dollar. She said, no. God said for me to give you this one dollar. I said, oh, okay, if that's what God said. She gave me the one dollar. And she called me half an hour later. She said, you know what? I went to my bank and they told me that somebody had put $10,000 in my bank account right after I gave you the dollar. I said, okay, so how much more are you going to give me now? <laughs> she says, man, you're the, you the best slot machine in the world. I said, sister. Hallelujah. So I'm glad that she got blessed. Amen. Because right after that, I got to pray for a bunch of people. And, you know, God is good. Amen. It makes you feel good in a way. She said she'll take care of me. I said, yeah, right. Everybody said they're going to take care of me. Hey, you're going to take care of me. No way to lay in the grave and give my family 20 bucks. All right. All right, so how do we do this? How do you arrive at this? Now, you, you got all these notes here. And yeah, I can give you all the answers, but I, I won't. I'll let you figure it out, okay? You guys can guess, right? You get the Holy Ghost. You can figure these out. Shut your mouth, you lie. <laughs> All right, so we'll go through this, and then uh, the scriptures will throw up, okay? So um, before we go to anything, why don't you take a look? Uh, it's not on yet, but let's go to Malachi. I want you to see Malachi in action. And I want to unravel some mysteries for you because there's the word curse in there. And I, w- I don't want you to be left in a place where you think, oh, wow, if I don't give, I'm going to die. Wow. Um, I don't want you to be like that. So we'll throw Malachi 3 up there, and then you can see for your own self. Now let's read this narrative that you have in front of you. I know it's a little dark for some of you, um, but, you know, sit by the light, and you can see. Or you can point the lamps to you. You know, we point them at the wall for decoration, but you can feel free to turn them. Everybody know that these can turn, yeah? Help yourself if you need. Get plenty, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, help yourself. All right. Now, when we look at Malachi 3, all right, let's go down some more. Keep going, keep going. Okay, right here, verse 8, all right, go back. Now, because of the finished work of Christ, curses don't exist unless you don't keep yourself in that holy place. Okay? Curses don't exist. Now, some of us are ill in our bodies, in our minds, in our, in our DNA or whatever. You can escape these things, right? It's a, and this is God, okay, by the way. This is God talking. And he's talking to the prophet. And he's saying this, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And what does God say? In tithes and offerings. Okay, sim- simple things. If you get a dollar, what is a tenth of a dollar? Ten cents. Right? How you know that the government already, on any dollar, they already tax you over four cents? If you're in Honolulu, they give you more than four and a half cents already. That's already gone. How many know that your income tax depends on your tax bracket? On average, the average person is already at the 27%. So before you even start off your paycheck, you can see that the government already is going to take their share without you even asking or allowing or giving them permission. It's gone. Just like that. It's taken. All right, that's the federal. Now, how about the state? Somewhere, anywhere between 12 and 17 percent, depending on your tax bracket, they're going to take it. Okay, so, and God is asking, you know, a 10, 10 percent, right? So, I, I know one thing God will make your 90 percent off of your gross go way further. The government ain't going to help you with your, with your taxes go anywhere. Amen. So, the thing is, you just want to be on the side of blessing always, right? So, again, here we are, and let me tell you something. 10% to a lot of people sounds like a lot. How many of you, that sounds like, whoo, that's, that's a tough one. Let me tell you something. Start someplace. Can you start at 1%, 1 cent out of every dollar? Can you do that? 
I can tell you this. God has found his way into the lives of people through, through employment, through free housing, through food, drink, health, wealth, wisdom, all with somebody saying, you know what, Lord, I'm going to start here and I'm going to work my way out. Now, I know some of you are like, oh, man. Hey, I started, when I first started, I started at the 10% level. And I went up, and currently I'm probably somewhere around 50%. I go half-half with God. Whatever I get, he gets half automatic. And that's just the way that I do it. Uh, I do offerings. Um, I try not to make it a drama show for all of you like, Hallelujah, Pastor Tim is going to give his offering now. Hallelujah. I do it in ways, you know, however I want to do it, that's how I do it. And believe you me, I still got to do what I got to do also. So sometimes I'll sow different things to different people. Some of you have been the beneficiary of a lot of this. Uh, you know, if you're in the restaurant with me, same time, I expect you to pay for me. But if you don't, <laughs> the Lord tells me to take care sometimes. And I'm taking care of a lot. Of, one time I was at... Uh, you guys remember, you guys know where IHOP is, huh? There was a table of preachers there, and I wasn't invited. That's a nice way of saying, screwed in. Now, nah, anyway, not like that. No. They had this exclusive club of pastors that believe that they are the blah, 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 blah. So they're all there, and I walked in. Some of them give me, you guys know what the oogie eye is, huh? Some of you get the oogie eye from your former friends or associates. I was getting the oogie eye from a couple of them. And it was in IHOP at this time. It was Dottie's. You guys remember Dottie's? And all? I was in there and I said, I was with a couple of Christian guys. And one of my friends, he's kind of like punchy. You guys know what kind of punchy you guys like? Pastor, you like to go over there and tell them. What you going to tell them? So, I'm going to just tell them. Whatever the Lord tell me, tell them. I'm going to tell them. I was like, sit down and relax. It's just e. So on the way, I, I asked the waitress. I said, you know what? Did they pay for the meal yet? She said this. This was a grouchy lady. She's like, preachers, they cannot figure out how they're going to pay because they're all trying to nickel and dime each other. And she goes, you and preacher, how come you're not over there? Because I know how to take care of my bill. She goes, that's right. You always take care. You always take because tipping is another thing. You got to give what is rightfully deserved, right? So I said, you know what, Auntie? This was Auntie Dottie, by the way, if you guys remember. Auntie Dottie was an old family friend. So, of course, I had to be on best behavior. She know my family. She know me. She's not going to, hey, you know, hear me cheap, you know. You, anyway, so I took care of the bill. It was somewhere around 75 bucks or whatever. I took care of it, and I took care of the tip. And then I paid the bill, and I didn't say anything. I didn't even look at them because some of them were still giving me the oogie eye on my way out. Took care of it. I just walked out. I went down, and one of the preachers ran out, and he chased me down. He says, I know you paid for that meal. I said, and? He goes, I just wanted to say thank you. I said, I'm not looking for thanks. God said, do it, I do it. And he says, well, you're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. I was, you know how I was blessed? I went down to Macy's. We only had one Macy's that time, all the way down the other side. I went there, and this lady saw me there, and she bought me $500 worth of clothes. Hallelujah. And she said, I'm so glad I ran into you today. Because <laughs> God has been telling me to take care of you. And subsequently, over the course of the next six months, every month she gave me $500 for six months worth of clothes. I said, I can get an ice cream machine or something. Said, the Lord said clothing. And oh, hallelujah. You know, the, the clothes you would buy got me started on all, you know, my preaching attire. Because I used to preach with shorts and slipper back in the day. Once in a while, you see the mock still come out on Wednesdays. Still, yeah, sometimes. Depends how hot I stay and how itchy I want to be. Anyway. I want to kill our kids. You know, like you see my cocky leg, but I don't care. You know, it's just the way it goes. But, you know, just by sowing a seed, I ended up getting a harvest. So always remember that this is not a requirement and it's not an, it's not an order or a command by God. Even though a lot of preachers like to make it a command. No, it's not. It's free will. You can give whatever you want. 
All right? But start someplace. Let God take care of you. Tithes and offerings are a funny thing because in the Old Testament, it says here in verse 9, you are cursed with a curse for you've robbed me, even this whole nation. He's talking to Israel at the time, okay? Because they were shirking their responsibilities. They weren't doing what they were supposed to do. And then it goes here in verse 10, bring all the tithes into, into the storehouse. Now, the storehouse he was referring to was their local synagogue, their local uh, meeting area, wherever it's basically a church. A synagogue is a church. And this is what he was doing back then. So that there may be food in my house. And the food he's talking about is the word. The word. So how many of you come here and you get fed very well by the word that we preach here? Because we try and make it understandable for you. And I grew up in the house. And if you're going to try to be hyperbolical with me, my ear closed already. I don't even like hear what you get to say. It's like, right, you're trying to be more smart than me instead of trying to make me smarter than you. Because I went to college. How many of you have ever had a professor that tried to be smarter than you and then you end up paying for it in the end because you lose track and you also lose uh, interest in what he's talking about because he's trying to be more smart than you. And when you ask him a question, they do one of these. <sighs> oh, they go, <sighs> what, flat tire, bro. Anyway, you see, we don't need that kind of preaching anymore. We need people that make us smarter than we were. So I'm not here to be smarter than you. When I get revelation, I'm readily available to share it with you. I just share it with you because I want you to be better than me. A real father does that for his kids. How many of you parents do that for your children? You want them to have a better life than you. So you're always on them. And they think you're hard on them. But actually, you're trying to make them smarter than you. Because you was pretty stupid. So these kids nowadays, when you take away their phone, you take away their video, you take away their privilege, they get all nuts with you. But back in the day, we never had phone. If you wanted phone, you had to listen for the ring and run before they hang up. <laughs> Remember those days? No more voicemail, never even have call waiting. If the ringing stopped, you don't know who and call. So you could get away with it before. I went call, you never answer. Not now, we all know. So you take away a phone from a kid, you know who calling them. Oh, pillow one, pillow two, pillow three. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember my kids, man, they, they thought I was really hard on them. But now they're starting to see that there was a, a method to the madness. Right? Because you try and keep your kids safe, right? Yeah, man. Because... I don't want, I don't, would I want my kids going back to Lanakila housing and living where I came out of? No, you try and make them a better life possible. So a church is supposed to exist to make your life a lot easier. You know, I had a pastor, my first pastor, oh my God. He wanted to be the shining example for us all. I remember some people tithing and giving him money and they barely could get their car running. But giving him money, and he's driving a brand new car, and their car is falling apart, and they would go and ask, Oh, Pastor, can you help me get a battery for my car? And he'd be like, Well, believe God for it. Why don't you sow a seed for it? And you know, when I had extra, I would just tell him, You know what? I'll buy you the battery. You know why? Because it's like this, right? They gave their seed to him. Isn't the return on investment supposed to be evident in your life? All of you in here, if you're giving to this church and you're not getting out of it, then leave. You know why? It's not the right place for you. If you were a part of a church system and you were giving and not getting the best health possible, get out. You should have got out a long time ago. I'm not even talking about materialistic or monetary blessing. I'm talking about living life so you can do ministry. You know, your greatest asset in your life is your health. Believe me, when you don't have your health, then you know poverty in all its, all its facets because you, want, you need that ability to go out. How many of you want to live a long time, right? I tell people this all the time. They say, oh, Pastor, you can live up to 120. I said, yeah, but if I'm 120 like this, uh, uh, and you got to change my depends and wipe my mouth, then I'm no good. Now, if I'm 120 looking like this, you ladies, pick your eyes up. You know. <laughs> then, you know, usefulness is one thing, right? 
Hallelujah. When you start losing your usefulness, why, man, get out of here. Go, go home to be with Jesus already. I always got to tell some people that I, some people are in, in their last deathbed and they're telling me, I got to live for my family. I said, how are you living for your family? They're living for you. I said, I got to give them permission to go on. Just, you know, hey, just go, bro. Everybody good. I had to tell my dad that when he was in his last week of life. Dad, it's okay. It's fine. Everybody's fine. We all wasn't getting along. Now we're getting along. You can go now. And he looked at me and he laughed. Uh, I said, you know why? Because that's the one thing parents worry about the most is are the kids going to get along after they... Yeah. And you know what? Most families don't get along because you always get one greedy one. Or two. Or three. Or all. <laughs> this lady one time, she, she was passing away and her kids were all trying to fight for her stuff because she couldn't stop them. They were all taking stuff. I told her, you know what you should do? Give it all to them early. Get rid of them already. And she did. You know what? They never came to watch her die. At the funeral, they weren't even there. And sad. You know what I mean? Really sad. So we had the funeral in our church, really small. And we took care of her last wishes and everything was fine. You know, we don't, we don't do things to get things. All right? Don't give because you, like, get something. Give because you love God. Amen? All right. So you... Check this out. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse and try me now in this. You guys see that? This is the only place, mind you, in the whole Bible that God says to test me, try me, challenge me. This is the only place. Everything else was all by obedience. This is by free will. God wants you to be blessed, but it's up to you. Amen? This is the only place. Okay, everybody see that? And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you, the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now, let me just share something with you because most preachers don't. They think that the window of heaven is going to open and God going to throw one big treasure chest out the window and hope you're standing under it on earth. Because if that was to happen, you wouldn't have the life to spend it. Go catch a treasure chest from a plane flying over. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I remember this guy in Florida. He was on the news years ago. He was out on the golf course playing golf. And somebody in a regular plane, you know, one of those propeller planes was flying over. And they, they found a pebble and they flicked it out of the plane. Boop. That little pebble knocked him out on the golf course. Boop. And he was out cold. And nobody could explain what happened. Now... If God was to throw a treasure chest out the window of heaven, what is the rate of survival at that point? Zero. And nobody would care about you dead under a treasure chest. They would have a free-for-all. And they wonder, who's the dead guy under the treasure chest? <laughs> so all your believing God, yeah, anyway. The windows of heaven, after the finish, you guys all know when I say finished work, it's Jesus on the cross saying it is finished. That begins the New Testament. The official beginning of the New Testament is Jesus saying it is finished because the old covenant is dead. This is the old covenant. The new covenant now, the windows of heaven have become your eyes to see opportunity. Because where has heaven, well, where has heaven delivered itself to, I should say? Our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So where is heaven, boys and girls? It's in you. The weird thing is, heaven is in you and you're in heaven. The only thing separating you from having heaven everywhere is your skull bone. Dun, 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 dun. How many of you get one skull bone that can pound nails? Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to admit it. Just ask the ones that are with you. You think I get hot head? And if they roll their eyes, you know that it's twice as thick as you originally thought. Okay? So windows, the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. How many know that the opportunities that will come your way, you will see it before anybody else sees it. You ever wonder why the world is just as blessed or even more so than the church? It's because 
they spot opportunity before we do. That's it. Right? How many of you wish you could go back 20, 30 years and start all over and say, Oh, if I had only bought that house at such and such a place, I would be on easy street now. Yeah, well, opportunity. Some people spot opportunities way before other people. So how many of you need to spot some opportunities in your life? Then here it is. This is how it works. All right, now go up to verse 11. It says here, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. You see that? So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land. A delightful land is you, because your, your very being is created from the dust of the earth. So that's land. Pick up your faces. If you're created from the land, you become a delightful Land, so that means this word delightful becomes your health, becomes delightful because you will be a blessing to many others. If, if you're one of these people that says, I wish I could help, but my legs they sore, I wish I could, but I'm not strong like the old days, or before time, how many love these people that always tell you about? I remember one time. And you look at them, and you get a hard time believe that had one one time in their life. <laughs> because remember this, if you're going to write anything down tonight, write this. The older I get, the better I was. <laughs> okay, let me just talk to some of you here who are believers in here. Sometimes we tell stories that are little embellishments. You know, we like to dress it up a little and we like to say, oh, I remember before time. Here's, here's one true story. Okay, I was playing in a volleyball game, Hilo Armory. Okay, I think we were playing Kona Waina. And Kona Waina was a bunch of people that was, uh, I don't know, they had tattoos that were misspelled. You know that kind of guys that, okay, now go make this tattoo because it's a good idea. I remember one guy had on tattoo and we we're looking. I was asking my friend, I was like, bro, what, what is that tattoo? It, was, it looked like hieroglyphics. I was like, I said, bro, I, I don't know. So I, I asked this guy, I said, hey, bro, what is that tattoo? He go, my girlfriend's name. And I was looking at it, I was like, what the heck? He said, I'm poking myself. It was right, right around here, okay, because he had his shirt off after the game. I was like, what is this thing? And he said, I'm poking myself. Her name is Josie. I said, Josie. And I was looking. It looked like on Candy Cane on the end. He tattooed it himself. So he tattooed her name but was upside down so he could read them. It was Josie from this way. And we were looking, it was like, oh, and we're looking at each other. Mm, okay. Mm. okay, brought him and poke him himself, and I guess he couldn't do him the other way. Like Josie. But the funny thing is, the S was the wrong way upside down. So if it was an S, it would go like this, right? S. He had him the other way. Like, well, one weird backward, and we're like, that's why we're like, what is these hieroglyphics? After I met my friend, we were like, brah. <laughs> you know, can you make, I don't know, at the time, it was the greatest idea you ever had. And then we told him, oh, so where's Josie? She stay here. You go, oh, no, that was five girlfriends ago. Now you stuck with an upside down Josie with a backward ass. And that's what, that's what our coach said. Yeah, backward ass. Exactly. Some of you got that. Anyway. I'm not, not going to explain that one, okay? Backward ass. Or should I say ass backwards? Okay, I don't know. However it goes, whatever. Well, you see, people, they do crazy things, right? Why? You know, at the time, it was a great idea. Well, in hindsight, we can all say, 
Well, before I did this, I remember playing in a volleyball game against that same team, Cornwine, and I, here's the story. There was a, you know, in, in the midst of a game, you, you're playing, right? And these guys, these guys was like throwing their chests out at us, like, yeah, 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 you guys think you're bad, you guys think you're bad, like. Okay, we were undefeated at the time. We were ranked number two in the state. And it was kind of funny because uh, I just like to hit the ball. I like to have a good time. And then this, this one ball came. It was an overpass. Came right up to the net. And we were playing the whole court at Hilo Army. And this guy was standing right there. And I, this guy was like, they're nothing. These guys, they're nothing. I was like, okay, we're nothing. But there was an over, overpass. I went up and I hit the ball. I turned in the air. And I tried to hit him. So it was like a rifle shot, like, Pah! I missed him, it bounced on the floor, I was so angry, it bounced on the floor, and hit the words in Hilo Armory on the wall. Boom, and it went all the way up there. And then I looked at the guy and said, you think that's nothing? He said, no, bro, that's something. <laughs> so when he said that, I started laughing. I said, oh my God, this guy... Yeah, it just caught me off guard because I thought he was going like, to start jumping up and down. Come on, come on. I was like, I just started laughing. I said, oh, my God. Some people got to learn the hard way. On well, the next play, my friend went up and spiked him right in the head. Boom, and he hit the same words off his head, though. And then he's like, sub me out already. These guys is too good. Well, what is the moral of the story? Pride will always lead to some kind of destruction in your life. It's going to make you tattoo an upside-down Josie on your chest. <laughs> It's going to make you do something ridiculously stupid. You know what I mean? That's just life. Amen. So, you know, the older you get, the better you can be. Not the better you, you, I was a legend, right? A legend in your own mind back then. Because how many of you know some legends in their own mind? Yeah? yeah. Like one guy, he told me one time, Oh, I was white male bear, bro. 50 and pumping. I said, 50 and pumping. I said, 80 wouldn't go. <laughs> but you went. I mean, you know people like that. Oh, I caught this fish in a bowl of one. Uh, yeah. Bait fish, little kalani. Yeah. Oh, boy. People that just people. You don't have to rely on, you know, your past. You can start from today. Start someplace and be somebody great, okay? All right. So, the devourer. Now, in, the, in Peter, in the writings of, that Peter have, it has in the New Testament, it says there that your adversary, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, this same devourer is the enemy in suggestive form because the devil has lost all his power okay i want you to understand that the devil has no power over you except what he suggests for you to do on his behalf the devil is dead and gone okay so here's the thing <laughs> a lot of people want to fight me for this here's the thing if the devil was defeated then why do we keep talking about him right hello what is the revenge factor that you're trying to exact when you talk about the devil? Some people tell me this. I defeated the devil today. I licked the devil. How to lick something that's not even an uh, obstacle in your way? All he does, his rebuke, he, the rebuking you enjoy is because the Lord stops him and has put a buffer zone between you and him. So he's rendered powerless. All he can do is suggest to you to do something on his behalf. So some people ask me, you know, the pastor that occupied this building before we moved in here killed himself. He committed suicide. The only reason we're here is because they were going to turn this into a nightclub. And the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night to move here. A lot of people are like, why are we going to move down for? Because God said. Even some people that I consider leaders were questioning my judgment at this time. Why are we going to go there? Because the church that was here before was so far in the hole to the landlord, it was making the body of Christ look bad. So God had us move in here, and we've taken care of a lot of things, and we've never been late on our rent, ever. 
This other church was late for well, two years, I think. They never paid rent. And he went, I think he killed himself because he never like paid a rent. See, here's the thing. Everybody does stupid things. If somebody trips and falls, I laugh first and then I try and render aid, right? Now, if you have this thing where you're going to kill yourself, okay, I can give you the whole backstory on why this pastor killed himself. It was because he believed in Romeo and Juliet more than he believed in the saving power of Jesus Christ. Because his young wife had died before him and he went into such a depression and a funk because that was his first girlfriend in his life that he, the last movie they watched was Romeo and Juliet, A Thousand Days. So he waited a thousand days, went to Kona and killed himself. Now, I'm kind of a realist. Yeah, poor thing, except that he should know better. Right? How many of you believe Jesus is powerful in your life? Then stay with that thought. No matter what you're going through, praise the Lord, you're going through and not to so bad that you got to kill yourself later. Amen? So the thing is, I offered that congregation, they had church on Saturday. I offered them this church, Saturdays, free. You don't need to pay me one penny. You know what they told me? No, thank you. We no like. You know why? Because of pride. Because some of them give me the oogie eye for a long time. So when you offer them a, an act of generosity that they cannot overcome because of pride, how many you know that they'll re- refuse you? And here's the thing. I don't even use the building Saturday night. You know in here? No, but not in Saturday night. Maybe you want cookie frog outside. You know, mouse run through. But we pay rent here seven days a week. Right? Some of you have ideas. You want to use the building? Yeah. Share the rent. Anyway. No. If, it, if it leads to growing the kingdom, bruh, use the building. Good night. You know what I mean? Well, what's the additional cost to me for you using it for a couple hours? Nothing. Right? Because, I mean, you know, God is a God of opportunity. Right? Hey, hallelujah. So we, we hooked up a water, water hose outside so different organizations can wash car in front. Yeah. Free. Yeah. I don't charge nobody nothing. Just give me something. Barato, bah. You know, kind of. Some scripts on the side, but you know. Yeah. Most people are generous. If I charge you a fee, you think you own the building. All right? Hallelujah. We had a wedding in here. A few months back, my insurance was going to go up. I tried to pass the cost on to the people. They got all mad. Yeah. What do you get mad for? There's a cost to doing things. If it's going to cost me money, I'm not going to do it for you. But, hey, amen. So they reluctantly gave the money. We gave them back the money. And we just wanted to see if they give the money. If you can do this, here the money. And I give you back. Okay, thank you. Because some people you just don't want to deal with. Amen. Here's another thing. If you go to Target, yeah, boys and girls, you guys see these bottles here? It has a small arrow. It's on the left side wall past the pharmacy. This is what I use. I concoct this potion here. When I got to deal with some of you, I just open them and I drink them all. <laughs> it's actually, you know, this prayer oil, some people, they feel like, oh. I got to go to the Holy Land and only get that oil. If you smell that thing, it's so strong, like make my eyes sore sometimes. But I make my own and I give it away to you. So if you want some of this, buy the bottle, 97 cents or so. I don't know if the price went up. Bring them. We make it oil. You can spray it to your heart's content. Some of you are like, you devil. And that's your dog. Good night. <laughs> I gave this to one to a lady and she said, My dog was pee loud, was making any kind, and I mean spread a dog and he wouldn't go sleep. That oil work. I said, Well you and spray him up his nose in his mouth. Don't drink it, boys and girls, okay? All it is is oil and water. You shake them, I pray over it, you spray them. Don't spread in your eyes. <laughs> if you're going to spread them in your eye, just drink the whole thing and go sleep. The last eye pain you ever had in your life, okay? It's supposed to be non-toxic. Don't test the theory. 
So if you want, you go, you go get the bottles. I've been buying, I've been giving. People, they, one lady gave me 20 bucks for it. I said, oh, thank you. Yeah, I bought 20 bottles, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, I made some more free. So, and if you need a refill, come back. The, the bottle, you buy the bottle, give you the first concoction free. Refills are $14,000, okay? <laughs> because if you use them that much and that fast, I know it's working. Nah. Anybody need one of these? No, I'll raise your hand. Fetch. Nah, anyway. This is my last one, by the way. Ooh, 100, 100, 125, 120, 150, 175, 200, 200. Anyway, yeah. Well, if, you, if you need, let me know. Okay. Um, in fact, we should just get a list going and you can put your name down and we'll, we'll somehow get it to you. Somehow. Could be on the window, you just come nighttime, just take them. Yeah. All right, you guys all good so far? I know, and then we can get to the notes, but. All right. You're in the notes. Okay, look here. Read with me. Okay, can you all read? You all went to public school at least? Praise the Lord. All right. Believers. Now read that first opening paragraph. You see, under all the scriptures, that's all the scriptures throughout the whole message. Now, I want you to be successful. How many of you want to be successful? That's the number one order of business in the body of Christ. You got to first want to be or do something before it happens. Uh, that's how faith is built. Amen? How many of you like faith when it's working? How many of you don't care for too much faith when not working? Well, <laughs> you know what? Faith is a funny thing because it's an automatic thing that happens. Like... Here's the thing, right? A lot of preachers like to use this example. How many of you sat on those chairs and believed with all your heart it was going to hold up your big carcass? How many know that that is the most basic faith you can ever exhibit? You just Some of you, I watch you sit down, you tilt the whole chair back and the people behind you are like, whoa, pushing. Whoa, big girl, hold on, you know? <laughs> well, you know, we... These chairs are very sturdy if we take care of them. Amen. So keep your stink feet off. <laughs> uh, some people, they think, oh, this is so nice. They put their feet up. What the heck are you doing? If you look and you have stains on the back of your chair, guess why? I got these last week brand new. And look at them this week already. All the kind. <laughs> I'm just playing. All right. All right, y'all in your notes? All right, the believer. Y'all believers? Yes. Does everybody have a set of these? If not, and if you don't get all the answers, we'll give you the master answer sheet for $14,000. Anyway, all right. All right, so the believer must understand that the current exchange for blessings today is tithing. In the kingdom of God. As we begin to learn and have financial order, we know that money is not a God, but crucial to receiving blessings. Okay? The world system is failing, and Christians must learn how to trust God to meet their needs in the knowledge of kingdom money. And tithing is the gateway to His provision and protection. Okay? There is a way to, you know, if you understand how, what we're talking about tonight, there's a way to access a place that your family has never accessed before. Okay? I'll just tell you that. You know, some people, they, they don't know. You know. They think that poverty is a curse that follows them all the way through the lineage. But how many know that you can put a stop to any curse anytime you want? Anytime. Like uh, Sunday, I told you guys a story about the lady with the breast cancer, right? And then how all her sisters and all her mother and her aunties all got healed and her grandma. Everybody got healed of breast cancer. And all I prayed for was one person. The whole family tree got healed of breast cancer. So I mean, you know, that, that's a blessing, but it took one person to come and be the seed for that. Okay, so sometimes money is, is a seed, yes, but how many know that you are a seed as well? So your family and beyond you is relying on you to take care of business. All right, so how many of you know some people that the best thing they grow in their yard is old cars? This is otherwise known as poverty. Okay? Why would you keep a car so long thinking that one day 
You know when the car first broke down and you knew somebody that could fix it? All you had to do was say, hey, you guys like one car. All you got to do is fix them. And get rid of it and somebody else will be blessed. But certain kinds of people don't do that. What do they do? They keep accumulating. They keep... So before you know it, you're looking, they even get Elio tied to the old car. But you don't see Elio until you walk in the yard and you go, rah, 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 rah. where the heck that dog came from? He's tied to the hub because the tires were taken off a long time ago, used on something else. The doghouse is now a 1972, I don't know, Cutlass or some, whatever, Pinto, Maverick. Here's one thing that I did as a young man, as a young Christian. I always told myself, I will never grow up. Because my dad was a wheeler dealer. You know, can't you? always get one car. And you don't know where the car came from. And your father goes, no ass. Well, I remember I was, a, I was a senior in high school. And my mother had this green Ford Maverick. And this Ford Maverick was, man, Ford Maverick. Except that one door, the car was hunter green, but this one door was lime green. And to access this door, the window had to be down because the door handle no work. So you'd have to reach in the car to open the door. And the thing would sag. So you'd have to lift up the car door to close the car door. And this was my mom. Okay, we had just moved out of Lanakila housing now. Okay, and we were living right above the jail, Punahele Street. And my mom was like, get in the car, I'm going to take you guys to school. No thanks, ma, we can walk. Get in the car. This car is a blessing. Well, blessings are subject to the person that feels they're the blessee. But my mom used to be like, we were like, ma, just pull over. By the Hilo Intermediate Band Room. Just pull over. And we all pile out because we had some kids going Hilo Intermediate, some going Hilo High. Because we we're only seven years apart, all of us. My mom, she was like, no, why would I do that? So she would come down Wainui Nui with four lanes of traffic because it's one-way pattern. Turn into Hilo Intermediate and drop off my, some of my siblings there. And we because there's a hole in the muffler. And this car door not working so good. And they would get out. And then everybody would yell, Hey, walls are here. <laughs> and my mom would be like, and then she would blow the horn when she drive away. <laughs> and we'd be like, Ma, we're going to get out over here. She goes, No, why would you do that? So she would go and my Hilo Intermediate cross Wainui Nui at the traffic light to go Hilo High to drop three of us off and pull up right in front by the office where the two pavilions are. And then. And we would get out of the car and all, everybody in the pavilions would look at us. Hey, the walls are here. Hey, what's up? Worse yet, if the thing kill. And she got a... And then on top of that, blow her horn when she's driving away. And we all get out. And, and you know what? One of my friends, he was trying to be nice. He goes, bro, one day, I like one car like that. I was like, what are you stupid? He goes, bro, that's some collector's item. And he was like, oh, you trying to be funny? He goes, yeah, yeah, it collects was everywhere. Because look, you can jump off two and three over here, five, and your mother going to work county building now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so shame. So my father got rid of that. And he got one 73 Toyota Corona station wagon. Not Corolla, Corona. You guys remember Corona, like the beer? And this one used to leak exhaust. And no more, the old days, no more AC in a car. It's just vent. So one of us was the defroster. Because rain, eh, Hilo? You got to wipe the steam off the... So you always get streaks in my mom driving leg. And the exhaust would leak in a car. So half the kids would be sick in the barrel. My dad just had this thing. Uh, God bless my father who went home to be with Jesus. Uh, 
But he was always a wheeler dealer. That's what he would do. You know, as I became a preacher, I told myself, I would never, ever, and this is what I said, Lord, I'm sowing this seed. I will never drive a used car ever again. I cursed myself. Now it's all I can do. Every time I try to buy a used car, disapprove. But I'm going to approve you for a brand new one. Huh? How does that work? You disapprove me for the used one and approve me for the brand new one. That's just how it happened. And I used to have this guy, his name was Tony. Maybe some of you guys know Brother Tony, Lampshade Lewis. Some of you know Tony Lewis. Man, he was my buddy, that guy. He helped me start this trip, by the way. And this guy, he used to have an old Toyota Tercel. And you know how you had to do them? The windshield wipers was broken. He had one string tied to the two windshield wipers into the car. And then when he go in raining, he got to do one of these, like... <laughs> So the windshield wiper. You got to jerk them and clutch the car same time while you're driving. This is the original HG Wells time machine. You got to. And then you got to wipe the window. And then you got to do this. And then you got to shift. And I was like, bro, you get more talent than most of the people I ever met in my whole life. You can do all this. <laughs> you got to picture these things. And then he was like, why? Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. No, everything is wrong with that. And he go, Pastor, buy me a new one. So I gave him a Toyota, another car. Same like the one he had. He got rid of that one. I gave him another one that worked. I found it for 200 bucks. Somebody else said. And he's like, Pastor, I don't know how for act the car. Everything work? <laughs> he said it was raining. He was looking for the string. You see how you can get used to poverty? You can get stuck. I went to somebody's house one time. They said, Pastor, you can come pray for our house. I was like, okay, I go to the house. And you, you know when you see one vice grip on the water, on the cold water, you know, vice grip just for turn them on. These are people that are getting used to poverty, right? Or you see the vice grip on the car window, the manual window, so they can vice grip them for open and close the window. How do you know that these things, you got to shake off in your life. There's a way out of this. It's called sowing and reaping, right? Seed time and harvest, tithing and offering. You can get out of anything in this life. You don't have to live the life you've been. If you're sick, there's a way to sow your way out of it. God has built in this mechanism that all you got to do is take care of what he tells you and he take care of you. How hard is that? Oh, evidently, some people go to their grave not wanting to give God anything. Yeah? They think God's supposed to give them. Let me tell you about Jesus. Jesus wasn't poor. Here is a very little known, understandable fact. That Jesus had 12 employees at least, and he had 300 people following him at any given moment. And he had a treasurer as one of his employees. Judas was his treasurer. How can you employ 12 people that you have asked to quit their jobs to follow you? How can you afford it unless you get money? You see, this is a basic fact. If you read the Gospels, Jesus had a house. He had a house. So how do you know that? These are all things that people say that, oh, Jesus was impoverished. No, he wasn't. He was very, he was okay. Right? And out of the overflow, he would feed everybody else. He just used those as examples. He had crowds following him all day long. And do you think Jesus said, hey, sow a seed on your own? No, he was the seed. God sent him as a seed so he could gain a family and he's going to take care of the family. End of story. So for us, how many know that? You're the beginning of the rest of your family's lineage. You're the first. So how are you going to do things? Don't be tight. One amen. Hallelujah. Don't be uptight. Oh, amen. More amens. Don't be tight. Amen. Well... You can be different. Everybody can be different. I've seen people that have sowed a seed, started tithing, boom, they end up with a job. And then they leave the church because they're so blessed. No more time for come. Miracle, yeah. miracle. <laughs> we get people like that all the time. Oh, Pastor, all I need is a job. Sow a seed, start tithing, and you get the dream job. Oh, I'm too tired for come church anymore. Oh, I'm going vacation. Oh, I'm going over here. Oh. You know that even if I'm on the road, guess where, I'm at, where I am on a Sunday, boys and girls? Church. Church. I may not agree with all the preaching, but I go to church. Why? 
because I'm still part of the family somewhere and I got to plant a seed while I'm there. It's not so much I got to go to church. I got to keep the flow working. So I go just to put something in the offering. Why? Because I know what flow is, right? How many of you got a beaver blocking your river? And I, you know how you know when you have a beaver blocking your river of blessing? You constantly say, damn. <laughs> Order in a court. All right. It's the truth, right? When you look at a pile of bills and you're like, damn. Ah, oh, you got a beaver. You can sow your way out of that too. Amen. Uh, I had, when I, when I first started this journey as a, as a Christian, I wasn't even a pastor. I was $750,000 in debt to the IRS. Through no fault of my own, I sold my business that I had. I was doing very well. Approximately sixty to $90,000 a month in gross revenue was coming into this business. And the Lord told me to sell it. So I sold it to this guy. And he ultimately sold it to somebody else and ran away with the money to Taiwan, with his, where his wife was from. So he left me with the whole debt load. We were contractually in agreement that he was going to take care of all of the payroll taxes. But he said, hey, brother, just leave it in your name for a little while. Big mistake. He racked that thing up with penalties and interest. It went up to $750,000 in debt to the IRS. Some of you got 5000 in debt to the IRS. You like jump off Honolulu Bridge. Give me a break. These guys were after everything. They, they froze all my assets, froze all my bank accounts. And all I could do is say, Lord, I'm going to tithe. I'm going to tithe. And I tithe. And I got three successive letters over the because my agreement with them was to pay $100 a month. Because the IRS don't care. They just want you to be in an agreement with them. 100 bucks a month. And the guy said, oh, okay. First offer I offered, 100 bucks a month. I thought he was going to laugh. He said, oh, okay. And you know what I was thinking to myself? Damn. I should have said $10. But... I began to do that, kept tithing. I got the first letter. Because you've been so faithful in paying your debt, the IRS is going to forgive you 250000 of your debt. I was like, praise the Lord, half a million. Half a million still in debt to the IRS. Three months later or so, I got another letter. Since you've been so faithful, we're going to forgive another 250000 of your debt. Hallelujah. So I'm still 250000 in debt making my $100 a month payments. I got another one several months later. We're going to forgive $245,000. Oh, my God. What about the five grand? They couldn't just give me the two fifty. dollars No, five grand. So I ended up paying. And then subsequently through, you know, strategic tax organization, I was able to get rid of that debt. So it ultimately only cost me, I think, altogether maybe 1500 out of my own pocket. And God was faithful because even the 1500 came back more than I could ever ask or think. So I'm here to tell you as an example. I'm just an example. I'm not the rule. Okay? However God operates in your life, that's between you and God, not between me, you, and God. Amen? Because how I many of you know that some of you, your still brain is under constructions to yet in Jesus. So everything is up to you because I cannot convince you of anything. All I can do is suggest things to you. I've seen some people, they, healing is readily available and I pray for them and nothing happens. Because within five minutes they say, oh, Pastor Tim came pray for my cancer. You guys hear the, the problem? Because you made ownership of your cancer, even God can't heal you. My problem, I mean, you know, cannot be God's solution because it's yours to unravel. God's DNA on your life, His stamp on your life is you are a child of God. Sunday we brought that scripture out. You guys remember that you are a child of God. As a child of God, you got to start talking the kingdom language. You cannot come up with your earthly language and think it's going to override kingdom language so we don't own anything on the earth it's all on loan to us so even cancer diabetes asthma brain tumors any dysfunction is on loan to you it's up to you to return it back to its owner who is the enemy you guys got that i don't care if you got knees ankles brain problems hearing taste smell whatever 
right? You got COPD, you got lung cancer, you got heart trouble. How many know that's all on loan to you, subject to whatever you begin to believe and speak, and then you sow your way out, you can get rid of anything that does not belong to God. Why? Because it's only a dirt problem. You guys get that? It's just a land issue. So you just got to work the soil. Everything to do with Jesus was always about sowing and reaping. And he talked about the word as being seed. So if you use the word as seed, you can sow your way out of anything. How many of you are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Right? Tired is... It's subject to your mindset, right? Because your body can be tired, but you can still be energetic, right? I saw an old lady one time. This is a true story. I went to the care home to pray for some people. I saw this old lady. She was 100 years old in the chair like this. Oh. And everybody's like, oh, Grandma, you're so blessed. You're 100 years old. Uh, what's so blessing about it? Uh. And then they told her, hey, whoever wants to go to Walmart today, get ready. This lady, all of a sudden, she's like, oh, what time are we leaving? Oh, well, hey, well. All of a sudden, she could roll her own wheelchair. <laughs> Subject to your mind, because she's like, oh, I'm so tired, so sick. Oh, blah, blah. Well, Walmart. Well, Walmart, what time are we going? Because huh? the other part of that was somebody had gifted everybody in the care home $100 for Christmas. $100 each. $100? And then she goes, I remember one time, $100, I could buy one house. Good night. Oh, when was that? When Abraham Lincoln was wearing diapers? I don't know. When this lady, you know, all of a sudden, her mind was clear. Oh, 100 years old, you know what Walmart is. Oh, it's my favorite place. So I get excited when I go in there. Why? Because you get plenty of lights. How many of you get excited when you go Walmart? Some of you? Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for all of you to set your sights on Target next. Come up a level. Come up a level. And then from Target, you're going to Macy's. Hallelujah. Everything is subject to what you believe in, what you speak, and then it happens. How I many know your money is something that you've got to also believe and speak? If you take out any kind of money, you can speak to this money and say, get pregnant and bring me plenty of babies in Jesus' name. You have a right to do that because... How I many you know that God said in Genesis, right? Go forth and multiply. How I many know? Go forth and multiply. So when you come up for your offering, some of you better rethink this. Like, oh, here we go. <sighs> no, come back. Bring me plenty of babies. Do you know that you are pregnant in a manner of speaking at all times to? Give birth to blessings at any moment. Some of you right now, just being in church, you're a blessing. And you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. What, did somebody hold a gun to your head and tell you, you better come or you're not going to go Verna's after? Anyway. But dang you. All right. So money is a certain kind of thing that you got to believe a certain kind of way. Amen. Now, I'm taking a trip. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to minister to some of our family's family on Oahu. So if you guys have anybody you want me to minister to on Oahu, get in line. Because these guys took all my space. Just let me know. I go pray for anybody while I'm there. Amen. It's just don't tell Mason. Because he got to take me. I'm going to make my kid shuttle me around. He don't know yet. He going to find out. All right, the other thing is I'm leaving for Dallas about the 19th or so. That one, I need some financial assistance. So some of you, you guys want to sow into that, please do, all right? Later when we take the offering, you see an envelope. If you want a gift, uh, first class ticket to me, it's $3,000. Why you laugh? If I was sowing into you, I'd believe first class for you. Uh, it's uh, I'm doing a conference. I've heard that it's a bunch of churches coming together to do this. So uh, you get a credit for that. Whatever I do that you have funded, you're going to get a credit back to you. Amen? And you get to write it off your taxes. Taxes off your taxes. 
Some of you need help. You know, you get a hard time. Okay. All right, look at your notes real fast. All right, let's read through this. A, to be successful in the kingdom of God, you'll have to think differently. Don't think about, oh, I know more. Always think about, I have, I just got to access it and bring it into the earth. Okay? You always have. You are never shortchanged in this life. Do you know that healing is available to you? How much healing is available to you? All that you need. So if you're struggling in some area of your body, then you got to look at what can get me out of this. If you go to the doctor, how much does that cost you? Nothing because I get medical. Shut up. You still got to pay co-payments, right? And your insurance is paying the bill. Go look at your statement and see how much that really costs. Your doctor is not doing you a favor. Amen. All right. Number one, most people have been trained in the world system from the time they were born. Is that true or not true? Right? They always say it is, save your money. Because why? Rainy day. Oh, you live Hilo. What? Now what? Here's how God thinks differently. Sow your seed so you never ever have a rainy day. You see how different that would be in God's eyes? Why? Because is God struggling for money? No. When God needs something, what does He do? Speak. So what do you do when you need something? Speak. Right? Some of you speak, which is a word seed. And then there is a monetary seed. And there's also an action seed. So three things that you can do. How many of you need a healing right now in your body or in your finances or something? Do you have an answer available to you. If you need healing, the seed of healing is to pray healing for... Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. If you need healing, what do you sow out? Healing. You need money. What do you sow out? Healing. Money. Of course money. Right? If you need love, what do you sow out? Love. How do you sow out love? Stop looking like that. You know your face is a seed too. You know? Just think if you walk up. Hey, what's your name? You like go to church. Marcy's a single woman. If I go, what's up? She can be like, what's up? I go to church. I like go to church. Okay. Not like that either. You got to be cool, right? If you, a, a, a person who needs friends has to be friendly, the Bible says. Does that make sense to you? So what is the seed of having friends? Is you got to be, so you sow a seed of being. Oh. The Bible is filled with this kind of wisdom. You know what Christians are experts at? Trying to figure out how it doesn't work. You, can, you tell anybody, oh, what do you need? I need this, but I don't think it will come. God is punishing me. God is so not punishing you. He is so not punishing you. Seven billion people in the world. God is going to only punish you. It's like the devil. Oh, seven billion people. The devil only after you. Only get one devil. Hello. So, one devil, one person. I cannot say, all of you are going to infiltrate your life. Oh, what time? I'm one person. No. The devil only can whisper to one person at a time. Even if at his best. So he uses demonic forces. And you know that the number one demonic force that is at work in your life? Number one. You know what the number one demon in your life is? Your opinion. Your opinion. You know why? That is the number one thing as a preacher. I have a hard time convincing people to change is their opinion. I get people visit this church all the time. The number one thing that I struggle with is their opinion. Because they come in. Oh, he's the pastor. Oh, I heard about him. I remember him from before. If you think like that, get the hell out of here. I don't need that hell in my heaven. Amen. You know, people, they hold me accountable to 20, 30 years ago. Hello. I think I can change in one day. But since 20 years, get plenty of days in between. People always like to accuse pastors of two things. Fooling around with chicks and stealing money. 
That's it. What else have you heard? Because it would be news to me. I like to hear those. Because he's always stealing money or sleeping with chicks. That's all that pastors get accused of. If you're a lady pastor, oh, she's just snobby. And she know where the right shoes. And see, lady preachers get it more easy than men preachers because we always get accused of stealing money or sleeping around. So which story did you guys hear? Well, probably was one of the two because there's only two. You know, ever hear, oh, I heard about that pastor. He's so handsome. <laughs> no, it's always about something ugly I supposedly did to somebody. But you know, when people are really sick, injured, ill, diseased, they all know my name, they all know my number, and they all, oh, I was talking stink about him. You can go call him and ask him. Maybe I'll call him. <laughs> I pray for anybody. You know how many times I prayed for enemies of mine? Well, let me rephrase that. You know how many times I pray for enemies of mine that I never know was my enemies until I pray for them? Then they said, I got to ask you forgiveness. I was really talking bad about you. It's okay. Let me take away that prayer right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> you cannot do nothing. People are like that. The way you live. You guys know where you live. High, low, bipolar, high and... Everybody in here, look around. Some of you looking around, you go, oh, I know who that is. You know what I heard about them. But then, hi, praise God. I'm so thankful to Jesus you're here. Because God can help you now. Oh, but hello. <laughs> I see that all the time, especially when I was part of this other church that rhymes with hope. Up. They, all the people, I, I used to work in the office, and you know, in the office, people come for help all the time. So I was a volunteer, and then people would come in, oh, you know, I'm just falling on hard times. I'm a tither, I'm a giver. All I need is help with my electric. And then you'd see, well, you got to go see the accounting. Oh, okay. And then they talk, to, and they're like, well, what do you need this money for? And then he pulls up the record of the giving. Oh, okay, I guess we can help you this time. And, you know, okay, that's one way. But you know what was the really bad part? After the person leaves with the check, they go, huh, you know that? You know what I heard? They all they there gambling and stuff. They're dealing drugs. They're doing this. They're doing that. Who cares? People only ask for help when they need help. I don't think you're asking for help if you don't need it, right? Unless you're standing by Walgreens with on sign. Come on now. These guys walk over there. <laughs> uh -huh. And where you got the pen for right on that? That looked like one brand new mosh pen. It's not cheap stuff, bro. Anyway. Hey, if you have a chance to give, just give. You know why? Even if they... They're doing it with the wrong reasons. Your heart is still right. So no matter where you put your money, it's going to come back as a harvest. doesn't matter. Amen. You guys all right with that? I had this drug dealer one time come up to me. He told me, Pastor, you believe in the power of prayer. Kind of hard to be in my line of work if I don't. Yeah. He said, because I get this stuff going down. It's going down. I need protection. Pray for me. I said, hallelujah. Okay, so I prayed for him. And he gave me this roll of money in rubber bands. He said, for the church. So I'm looking at the money. I'm like, green, it's Jesus all the way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some people don't believe it. You should never do that. <laughs> Yeah. Last time I checked, it said, In God we trust. In God I trust. In God He trusts. We match. It all match. Put that in. And you know what? That money He gave me went to buy preschool toys for the preschool. Years and years when we first started the preschool. That guy, that notorious guy, bought all the toys to help start the preschool. And you're going to tell me that's evil. You're going to tell me it's evil. Some people are like, well, I don't know now. Hey, no, 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 no. 
How did I, how did I fall into getting this money? By praying for somebody. And he was grateful. And he sold. And the kids benefited. And I don't know what happened to him. But last I heard, he got blessed. But then he went to prison. So, if he went to prison first, he no can give me seed. You guys all get the picture. If somebody walked up to you right now and gave you a bag of money, would you question where it came from? Come on now. I'm in a room full of you guys. I know what kind of people in here. If somebody just said, hey, watch this for me. Keep them. I think I'm going to the authorities now. Oh, no, no. You look in the bag. Make sure no more nothing extra inside the bag with the money. He said, keep them. Walmart. Oh, no, we're at Macy's now. All of a sudden, you get one bag money, you can go Macy's. I see how it is. I want you to look at your notes here. Now, you can, uh, you know what? Take the master sheet. Whoever wants a copy of the master sheet, they can have it. All right. But I want you to go down here, okay, to number A3, because that's important for you to know. All right, I want you to file this away. Okay, the kingdom of God. I have capitalized it here, but it's not really capitalized in the Bible because it's not a place. But number three, A3, this is what it, you should write down in there. The kingdom of God, number three, is simply God's way of doing things. Okay? You guys all know that the Roman Catholic Church survives based on the underworld, the mafia's money, right? Do you think that the Roman Catholic Church believes that that's evil money? No. Okay. How many know that God may use all manner of men? According to the Bible, it says He will use all manner of men to pour into your bosom. So you got to be ready, willing, and able to not just gather this, but to pass on a portion of it. So if God gave you a windfall tonight, how many of you would pass on a portion of that to someplace or somewhere else? Of course, because you are... Everybody say the word, generous. But you're also smart. And you also want to stay blessed. So whatever you... Now let me tell you this. This lady one time, she used to belong to our church, okay? She came to church one time and she said, Pastor, come by my car. I get something for you. Now when they say these kind of things, you're wondering to yourself, is this a dead body? Is this... Well, I went to her car and I, I was bracing myself because this lady was pretty notorious from Kilkaha. Most of you Kilkaha people like that. But anyway, <laughs> I just played. <laughs> but this lady, she's like, Pastor, come by my car. You know when they have that half, half whisper? Just come by my car. I get something for you. I went to her car and this is, she said, Hey, Pastor, you think the church can use this? And it was dusters. Dusters. You know those fuzzy, hairy, fat ones on the stick. She had literally 100 dusters. Because I think she said it was some store was selling them for one cent each. So she thought in her properly, well I should say improperly, I don't know, her thinking mind... That the church could use 100 dusters. And she said, I'm not going to take no, Pastor. Just take them. Can you see me going back to her car six or seven times for dusters? Walking back in the church. Going back. And I started to get all allergy because, you know, dusters attract. I mean, you guys are brilliant in action. I was like, oh. And she's like, Pastor, why are you sneezing? Use these dusters. I said, the dusters get dust. That's why. How long was on the store shelf? She goes, I don't know. But she gave me a 100 dusters. Now, how many would say, well, that's a blessing. I think we still have some of those still here at the church. About six left out of 100. Praise the Lord. And it only took us since 1998. <laughs> Dusters. 
You know, I told her after it, I was like, you know, sister, they invented this thing called a vacuum cleaner. That technology is just proving that it works a little better. And, you know, she told me, she's laughing. <laughs> You're so funny. Go vacuum the dusters then. I can't win for losing and I can't lose for winning. Hallelujah. So we still get, what, six dusters left. If any of you needs a duster that has more dust than dust-catching abilities, I think we still have some somewhere upstairs um, gathering dust. In her mind, this was a blessing. And you know what happened to her? She bought those hundred dusters, gave them to the church, and somebody, somebody blessed her and said, Hey, your church can use dusters. They gave her a hundred more. So she sowed a seed of dusters. She's reaping a harvest of dusters. And she wants to bring the other hundred to the church. I told her, sister, go down and give the homeless guys dusters. Let them walk around. So I don't know if you remember, about 1998, a certain group of people, I think was from Salvation Army, were marching down the road with dusters in their hand. They had decorated them and they were using it as decorations. Some of them made kahilis out of them. <laughs> so I refused that secondary blessing because, man, you're talking about 17 years later, I still get some left. Some of you right now, don't go through your closets and think, I wonder if the church can use this. Because I'll tell you guys another story. This guy came to the church. He said, Pastor, I get these toilets. And he said the words, like brand new. He, I didn't catch the like part. You know, what stands out to you is brand new. He said, I get these toilets, Pastor. I'm going to donate them to the church and you can do whatever you like. And he said, still in the boxes. But I didn't catch the word like brand new. So he brought me these toilets, six of them, I believe, and he dropped them off. And they were the old porcelain style, you know, the ones that are like 75 pounds each. The one you, you pick them up and instant hemorrhoid city. Anyway, basically, I was like, oh, my God. And then I opened the boxes, and they were all used. And they weren't clean very properly. He said, we just took them off the job site, Pastor. It's for you. Praise God. Be blessed. I was so blessed. In the middle of the night, I had to take them to the restore, you know, the Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> just to get rid of them. To them, I don't know what they did with them, but somebody's sitting on a porcelain throne. That they can never move ever again. Oh, yeah. Like brand new. Well, be careful when people tell you that. Hey, I get plenty of kids clothes. All of them is just like brand new. And then when you get them, you're like, that's on garage. Yeah, that's all people are, you know. Hallelujah. One guy gave me one time, Pastor, you can use a jumper cable. He gave me the thing. Was missing one of the stuff. Why are you going to give me something three thoughts? Anyway, but people are like that, so be careful. Amen? Don't bring it to the church. Go sell them. Bring the money to the church. Yeah, because if you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to give this. To no, go give it to somebody. And then, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because some people think that everything is a blessing. Amen? Everything. That same lady with the dusters. Oh, my God. One time, <laughs> this lady was notorious. And she lives right by Puhi Bay section. She has tents full of stuffs. Anyway, but she used to always bring us stuff that we cannot use. Like, she brought me one time two steering wheels. She said, I thought of you because look like your car steering wheel. And she said, just in case your steering wheel broke. Okay, now, now all of you, you guys are pretty progressively thinking, right? Clear thing. 
Just in case my steering wheel broke. Now, let me ask you this. What would it take for my steering wheel to broke? Probably my face on the steering wheel. Where I wouldn't have need of a steering wheel anymore. I would have need of a casket, right? So some people, they really, they think of everything as a seed. But it has to be proper because... <laughs> you guys catching my drift on this? It's like saying, you know, I get these license plates you can use from all the states in America. Yeah, I, what you going to use them for, you know? I had a, this other Asian family in my church. They said, Pastor, you can come to, our, come to our house. We get something for the church. I went there. It was up in I remember. I walked. Uh, well, I couldn't walk in the garage because it was full of newspapers. You know, yellow newspapers, and it was stacked to the ceiling. And you couldn't even get by. You got to do like this just to get to the... And they were doing that. They were functioning in dysfunction. Like this with the shopping stuff. And they would get in the house, and then they would, couldn't find their way in the house. I said, the church can use all these newspapers because we like give them. I said, why were you storing up? I said, oh, just in case get war. Well, evidently, people were saving newspapers in case of war because you do a lot of wiping, I guess, of something, some part of your anatomy with newspaper. That's what the lady told me. And I asked my grandma, who's now ninety, going to be 93 this month, I asked my grandma, Grandma, you guys used to save newspapers. You go, oh, yeah, you got to do this with the paper. She thought, you know, if, if war break out, no more toilet paper. And this was evidence because my grandma lived come on our housing. She told me one day, you can come to my house and get down that bin from the top because Christmas time she has these bins up on the top. I don't know, Andre the Giant or Shaquille O'Neal came in. And, but I opened her cabinet and she had probably a thousand rolls of toilet paper. So which one is worse, the toilet paper hoarding or the newspaper hoarding? Uh, I don't know, you know, everybody get their own deal going. And she said, if you ever need newspaper, let me know. I get extra. Yeah, you get extra. Man, you, you get more toilet paper than cost you less when get hurricane season. <laughs> How many of you ran out this weekend and bought toilet paper and water? Just go, I know, get newspaper. You guys can no need go water let me tell you in case of hurricane get plenty of water coming from the sky <laughs> how much bottle water is enough bottle water in case of hurricane i don't know i just fill your heads with a lot of tidbits of factual information anyway well god is good amen so you guys all happy yeah how happy he stay you happy you here? Yeah. You could be happy in heaven. Where you rather be? The, how come everybody say when somebody dies, oh, they're in a much better place? Where you rather be? <laughs> Why are you so afraid to die then? Okay. How many of you have these apprehensions like, oh, one day I'm going to die. I hope I go to the right place. I don't think it turns on the way to heaven, so I think you're going to get there. Yeah. All right, so money is a funny thing. Yeah, I could talk about money all the time. You guys like these stories I tell you guys of these crazy people? All my stories have somebody stupid attached to them. You ever notice? Hopefully it's not you guys. But if you leave, I'm going to tell one story about you. So don't leave. All right, let's stand. Let me pray.